To begin the knife build, I took layers of 15N20 and 1095 steel and cleaned them on the belt grinder. After each piece is completely cleaned, I stack them randomly to give the pattern an interesting look. With the stacking complete, I MIG welded all the layers together, and proceeded to forge weld them. I almost never use flux while forge welding, so to prevent the layers from oxidizing, I compress them together before they get a chance to. I also use a wire brush to clean up any additional oxides that may form on the outside. While drawing out the steel, I re-squared it on its corners to make the pattern more interesting once twisted. Now that I forged it, I let it cool and mark out the places I want to cut.
I used a grinding disc on an angle grinder to remove the hard scale before smoothing it out on the belt grinder. Now I restack, remig weld, and reforge weld. Once the bar was completely forged, I cut it up into smaller sections to then twist. I wanted to see what the cross section of the bars would look like, so I etched the end of this one just to take a peek. Now I thoroughly twisted each bar, twisting some counterclockwise and some clockwise to make the pattern more interesting once I welded them together. To clean each individual piece up, I re-squared them under the power hammer and used a wire brush to remove scale. After twisting, every one of these bars is filled with delaminations and cold shuts. So to get rid of them, I ground it with the angle grinder, and again, cleaned it up on the belt grinder.
Time for more forge welding. To prevent welds from ending up in the final knife, I ground them out. To start shaping the blade, I cut off the end of the billet. With the forging complete, I moved on to profiling the blade. To profile the blade, I first drew the profile with a sharpie, then moved to the grinder to refine it. After achieving the right profile, I ground in the flats and bevels. To make sure the bevels I ground were centered, I marked the middle of the blade. After rough grinding the bevels and clip point, I put the blade back in the forge for touch marking, normalizing, and the quench.
After the quench, I tempered the blade for two hours at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, until it was a nice golden straw color. After that, I moved on to hand sanding and etching the blade. I'm etching the knife in ferric chloride, then taking it over and sanding it with fine grit sandpaper, doing this repeatedly until I get a deep enough etch. To me, the etch qualifies as deep enough when I'm no longer sanding away the black oxides on the 1095 after the etch. Now that the etch is deep enough, I submerge the blade in high concentrated instant coffee. This makes the dark areas of the steel even darker. After it set in the coffee for about two hours, I pulled it out and sanded it again with fine grit sandpaper. While doing this, I try to be far more selective than after the ferric chloride etches sanding only areas that absolutely need to be sanded. At this point, the blade still has a few dark spots that look faded, but I'll come back to them later. For the guard of the blade, I melted copper and aluminum together, 10% aluminum and 90% copper, to make aluminum bronze, this is because aluminum bronze looks cool and has very good corrosion resistance. After casting the ingot, I cooled it down so I could look at it. Currently, this piece of metal can't be used for a guard, so I needed to forge it down into a more convenient shape. Before drilling holes in the guard, I ground its sides flat. An important part of fitting up a guard is layout. First I found the center, then I found the thickness and width of the tang of the knife, and transferred that onto the guard. With the layout done, I center punch the parts where I wanted to drill. Center punching vastly increases your accuracy while drilling. This is extremely necessary because a great deal of accuracy is needed to fit a guard properly.
And now the filing begins. After each small amount of filing, I check the guard fit up to see how it's going. I didn't shape the guard before roughly fitting it to the knife. That way, I knew when I did shape it, I could make it square to the blade. Here, I'm filing a recess in the guard where the shoulders of the knife can sit once it's been fully fit up. For the handle, I chose a block of desert ironwood and started by cutting it out on the bandsaw. With that done, I marked out the tang and drilled holes in it. To shape the tang slot in the handle, I used a drill bit and a brooch to open it up. Again, like the guard, after every little bit of wood was removed, I would test to see how it fit to the tang. To help the handle block fit up to the guard, I ground the top of it using the contact wheel on the grinder. To improve the fit up, I ground the bottom of the guard to match. The fit up wasn't even close, so I kept removing high spots from the guard until I got the fit up I wanted. Closer, but not quite. You can still see gaps. This was quite a bit closer. To help the fit up go quicker, I shaped the handle. Doing this removes spots where the wood is contacting the guard. Before fully shaping the handle, I bedded the tang. This is where a protective layer is coated around the tang of the knife. Then, the blade is epoxied to the handle, creating a perfect fit up when the blade is removed. With the tang bedded, I can shape the handle freely, knowing that whenever I put it back on the knife, it will always be in the same spot.
Because I don't fully trust epoxy to keep the knife together, I drill a pinhole. Now that I'm done shaping both the guard and handle, I hand sand them to give them a better finish. Buffing the handle really brings out the figure in the desert ironwood. The blade got slightly scuffed while I was working on the guard, so I re-coffee etch it. The final fit up is here. All the components have been finished and just need to be assembled and epoxied together. Before the epoxy completely sets, I wipe it off with a paper towel. Then I ground off the extra length of pin that was still sticking out. And to finish out the pin, I hand sanded it and buffed it. The last steps are applying oil to the handle and sharpening the blade. To sharpen the blade, I used a fine grit belt to rough in the secondary bevel. Then use the back side of a similar belt with buffing compound on it to polish the edge. There you have it, the completed knife. But I'm not done yet. I still need to make the sheath. To start on it, I trace around the blade on a piece of paper, leaving room for the welt. Because of the guard's shape, 
I need to trace it onto the piece of paper as well. I forgot the belt loop. Now I've got all the pieces. I lightly wet down the front of the sheath for tooling and punching, and I wet down the back of it to bend over the belt loop. Using this tool, I marked where the stitching will go. And using these tools, I also mark where the stitching will go. Using punches, I can begin tooling the leather, but not with that one yet. Now using this one, I give it a triangular pattern that somewhat looks like scales. With all the tooling done, I dye each piece of leather. Now that the sheath's been dyed, I glue it together. To create holes for the stitching, I drill each place that I've marked. After drilling the holes while the sheath is still glued up, I clean up the edges using the belt grinder.
Using these groover tools, I cut out insets where stitching will end up. To work on the belt loop, I peel the sheath apart. To start out, I punch holes where stitching will go. Using beeswax, I burnish the belt loop's edges. Now I begin stitching the belt loop together. Then I stitch the rest of the sheath together. To polish off the edges of the sheath, I first sanded it, then dyed them, and finally burnished them using burnishing gum. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you want this knife and its sheath, there's a link to my website in the description below. Thanks for watching.